everyone. We're Nick. And Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures so far, then generally speaking, you will see us traveling around the world and seeing amazing new places. As we have traveled through these countries though, then we have noticed a few things that are a little bit different from what we're accustomed to in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this YouTube channel is to share our travel experiences and hopefully inspire other people to travel more. With that, we want to share some tips and tricks that we've picked up in each of the countries that we visited so that if you want to go to the same places, you'll be armed with some knowledge and information to help you with planning and to make navigating around each of those places easier. Today's video is going to be focused on the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> split our time in the UAE between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. While a few of the pointers that we're going to be sharing with you today are going to be specific to these places, there will also be some general pointers about the country that we are also going to relate to you. We hope that you find these tips and tricks useful. If you're planning to go to the UAE, I'm sure this will come as no surprise, but it's hot there, especially if you're visiting in the summer. So. When you go outside, expect to feel this humid moisture in the air and kind of just start sweating into everything immediately. But don't worry too much because there's air conditioning everywhere. It's in the metro, at the mall, restaurants, cafes, and also places of worship. While the UAE is based in the Middle East, it is very Western focused, especially when it comes to its commercial strategies. As a result, when you do go through either Dubai or even Abu Dhabi, then you will find parts of both of those cities that are very heavily laden with brands from pretty much all over the world. And those brands can be for pretty much most things. So whether it's food, fashion, electronics, or anything else, then you will see brands that we are very accustomed to in the Western world, splattered all over the country, even ones that apparently had gone defunct. Like in the UK, for example, Debenhams, the department store, we thought that had gone under, but it's still alive and well in Dubai Mall. Who knew? Unlike in some of the other countries we visited where toilet paper isn't necessarily the norm, and the norm is to use the hose that's beside the toilet, it kind of varies more in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. We stayed at a hotel when we went to the malls, restaurants, cafes, even places of worship. They were all very westernized and what we are accustomed to back home. They had toilet paper and nothing felt different. However, the reason we're bringing this up in this video is because at one of our Airbnbs there, we did have to ask for toilet paper. So we're not 100% sure if other Airbnbs operate that way, but it's just something to keep in mind for if you do book an Airbnb, you may have to ask, but again, it was then provided for us. As with all Muslim countries that we have visited so far, the places of worship so we're talking about mosques and grand mosques, are completely free of charge. Which is wonderful news because, especially when you get to Abu Dhabi, the grand mosque there is one of the most stunning buildings you are ever going to see. We thoroughly recommend that you go. As ever though, you do definitely have to be respectful of dress code, so covering hair, shoulders and knees is an absolute must. Do also bear in mind though that once you get a little bit further outside of Dubai, and we are talking really more about Abu Dhabi than anything, then you might also find yourself needing to wear the same kind of dress code even for non-religious buildings. So the likes of Khazar al Watan, for example, which is a glorious building but it is entirely a government building then it was still expected of you to wear exactly the same dress code as you would to go to a mosque. So it's best just to do your research ahead of time based on where you're planning on going as to what is appropriate for you to wear. Well, Dubai is very modern and seemingly liberal. You kind of feel like you're in any other European or North American city. For example, you have potable drinking water, you have phenomenal public transport, 
and you have access to, as Nick mentioned before, any food or materialistic item you could ever dream of. It is really overwhelming. However, keep in mind, this is still a Muslim country, so you do really need to be respectful of their local laws. With regards to transport, as mentioned, Dubai is incredibly well connected and it has a very good public transport system. When it comes to moving around that metro, then you can just get single fares every time that you want to go. However, it is worth noting that when you do need to get from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, the only method that you can do this through is by bus. And the only method of payment that they accept is using the local transport card specifically for Dubai. Without that, you can't go on. So. Perhaps if you are planning on doing something similar to what we did in terms of the itinerary, then it may actually be better for you to invest in that card to begin with. That way you can just top it up with what you need to as you go through Dubai, and then you already have it in hand for when you then take the bus through to Abu Dhabi. Once you do have a ticket though, then the bus service is regular. It's probably every 20 minutes, and the total journey time takes about two hours. So. It is a lovely experience when you get there, but it is just worth bearing in mind with regards to ticketing. While we're on the topic of public transportation, I think it's just useful to clarify the fact that Dubai's public transportation is based around the metro, while in Abu Dhabi it's more bus-based. And just so that you're aware, they are two separate systems. You cannot use the card that you buy in Dubai in Abu Dhabi, but we found that public transportation in both of these cities, it was easy, it was convenient, and it was very affordable. We have mentioned public transport and the reason for this is because we did end up using a lot of it. The reason for this is because Dubai and Abu Dhabi as cities are pretty damn big and so you cannot just walk from one end to the other unless you want to get severely dehydrated and potentially be rushed to a hospital. Do not recommend. So with that, public transport is your friend. However, if you would rather get some form of private transportation by way of a taxi or an Uber, then these are also available. It is worth noting that especially when you're trying to go from or to an airport, then there are standardized fares for every taxi that runs in both of those cities. And that also goes for any point of interest that you're trying to go to as well. That way, there's no need to haggle and you will not be able to get scammed while you are taking a taxi within either of those cities. Unlike Dubai, Abu Dhabi does not have potable water, meaning you're going to need to buy water bottles so that you can stay hydrated. However, you can brush your teeth with the tap water. All of that said, there's an important difference between the two cities in that Dubai is more modern and liberal, and Abu Dhabi is noticeably more conservative. We noticed that with just how people were dressing when we were walking around tourist attractions and out on the street. In Dubai, you would really see the full gamut from ready to go out to the club to very conservatively dressed due to presumably religious reasons, whereas in Abu Dhabi, most people dressed more respectfully on the whole. And that concludes our list for the UAE. I think we were anticipating that it was going to be a good time for us, but I don't think we quite anticipated how good a time it ended up being for the pair of us. It's a really, really cool place to go, and we do recommend that you visit at least once in your lifetime. But that all said, while we do obviously know that our tips and tricks may be helpful to most people, we also recognize that we haven't covered everything. Therefore, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for tips and tricks yourself, then feel free to put them in the comments below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>